Every year since 2008, United Nations member states have been encouraged to observe World Autism Awareness Day in order to raise awareness of autism and Asperger's syndrome around the world. World Autism Day is celebrated every year to raise awareness about people with autistic spectrum disorders throughout the world. And World Autism Awareness Week, which is organized by the National Autistic Society, runs from Monday 30 March to Sunday 5 April 2020. Joining us via Skype is Daisy Jonathan. Good morning to you, Daisy. Hi, good morning. And thank you for joining us this morning. How are you? Thank you for having me. All right. Now, what has your journey and involvement with autism and special needs been so far? Um, for me, the journey started as a parent of a child on the autism spectrum. So um, when my son was diagnosed, I had to look for, you know, um, you know, ways to reach out to him, ways to help him become more functional and independent. And um, as I searched for answers, I had to, you know, basically um, work with him because the activities, you know, that were available, the things that were available, the resources available for him in Nigeria at, this, at that time was quite uh, minimal. So I had to go back basically to school to study, back to, you know, first to be a therapist, you know, try to learn, not just for him, but as, as my journey evolved, I had to learn to work with, you know, other children on the spectrum, you know, so I had to go back to learn about therapy, the different kinds of therapies. And then from then, you know, from after learning about therapies, training as a therapist, uh, it, it occurred to me that I also had to work, you know, within the education sector, you know, because the education sector had quite, um, I wouldn't say unqualified, but, you know, teachers were not quite knowledgeable. So I moved from being a therapist. In addition to being a therapist, I had to go and um, train to be a special educator and then again to be a trainer. So at this point now in my journey, I am focusing more on training and building the capacity of all the people to provide ev evidence-based uh, practices and therapies for individuals on the autism spectrum and related disorders. All right, so given all of this times, what progress would you say you've witnessed given all of the times? Yeah, over the years, I, I would say there's been increased awareness, you know, that, that I would give to, you know, there's a lot of work that's been done, but by individuals, a lot has been done within the special needs community by parents themselves and by advocates. So there's been increased awareness. Um, I would also say there's been increased misconceptions too, because the awareness is increasing, and then you know people are getting both you know the good and the bad information together and getting it all mixed up. So there's increased awareness, there's increased uh, misconceptions. People are you know autism is suddenly becoming you know that's one liner you use for a joke you know or you know to, to tease a friend. Um, I've also over the years seen an influx of you know, um, trained and untrained personnel. So we, we're having more resource persons in the area of autism, more therapists that springing up. Uh, there are more intervention strategies also, you know, springing up. And quite importantly, we have more empowered parents now. Parents are getting a lot more empowered. Parents are talking more about their children's um, challenges, their strengths, you know, the success stories and all of that. Um, with internet, you know, coming on and everything and social media, what we are also seeing is a lot more connections and a lot more support across board. So I, I can be in Lagos, Nigeria, and then I'm, I'm discussing with another mother in Ethiopia or, you know, speaking with someone in Kenya, and we are sharing stories, you know, because we have a platform that social media, um, in, in the, the media provides for us. There's also the, a more coordinated approach um, towards autism now. Um, before now, in the last couple of years, we've had people just spring up to say they are therapists, you know, people who are not trained, if you like, I would say quacks, you know, who are not trained. But now we have a more coordinated approach in Nigeria as, as we speak. We have the Association for Behavior Analysis in Nigeria. And, you know, with associations such as that, we are able to put ethical practices in place. We are able to ensure that the people who, who provide the services for our children are trained, are certified, and they're people who are able, you know, to, to handle the needs of our children and make them a little bit, you know, not just a little bit, but more functional and more independent and prepare them for the future. All right, just before I let you go this morning, I'm concerned about this year's theme, which is actually transition to adulthood. 
Um, why this theme? Um, and I'm just asking, has this been neglected in years gone by? And if it has, at what cost? Yeah, before now, when you hear about autism, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is a child. You know, we all we talk about children on the autism section, but these children will grow up to go through puberty, to become teenagers, to become adults. And, you know, while every parent's prayer and hope and wish is that the children, you know, get better, but we're still going to have adults with autism. So we're beginning to um, focus more now on, you know, preparing these children to become adults who will be able to um, hold their own independently, you know, within um, society. So we're talking about building self-help skills as soon as it's possible, you know, and that starts quite early, you know, build um, vocational skills, you know, so we're not focusing anymore on, you know, the autism alone, you know, parents can spend a long time focusing on getting their children to communicate, getting their children to, you know, to be able to read and write, you know, so we're saying, look, beyond why you're trying to build the communication skills, why you're trying to build the social skills. Also prepare this child for life after you're gone. Life when you're old and you're no, you know, you're no longer able to support as you're able to support as a young parent. So build self-help skills, build vocational skills. You know, um, make a career plan. What is this child going to read in the university? What kind of universities will they want to attend? You know, what colleges, what choice of colleges? You know, we start working about puberty. For the females care for their, you know, themselves in puberty. We talk about sex and sexuality. I mean, it's, it's part of human um, growth and development. So we start looking at the students and teaching them about sex, about sexuality, about dating, about relationship building, because they're going to grow up and they're going to have those needs and those needs will have to be addressed. All right, Daisy, Jonathan, thank you for your time and for joining us this morning on News on the Hour. Thank you so much for and having me. Thank you me. for making the world a better place for one child out there as you do what you do.